Guys, Mozilla is implementing a feature that might end tracking and privacy invasion forever. Let's get into it and see how good this is. Guys, in a nutshell, cookies are those pieces of data that a website sets and it can read and send to the to itself, to the target, to identify certain information, such as logins and just other information as well, right? Uh, for the longest time, that have been used for tracking. And the main reason is the easiest reason is like, okay, let's say you have logged into Facebook, right? And then that Facebook will set a cookie that, hey, Hussein has just logged in. Now, if fizzy slipper as a site includes includes some sort of a script that calls in Facebook, say, hey, the browser will say, hey, there is a cookie for facebook.com because it's a one cookie jar. It's a huge, contains all the cookies, right? And in this case, that call to Facebook will send that cookies. So technically, fizzy slippers can send other stuff as well about you and can track you ac across multiple websites. What, what, what Firefox did is like, okay, we're going to create separate cookie jars even if the cookie belong to that particular website so let's go and talk about the state partitioning which they did here to solve this right so let's talk about it a little let's let's, let's read through this state partition is a technical term for new privacy feature in firefox called total cookie protection which will be available in the etp strict mode in firefox Firefox 86. This article shows how state partitioning works include of Firefox works inside of Firefox and explains what developers of third-party integrations can do to stay compatible with the latest changes. So this essentially not just implements about cookies. It talks about cookies, storage, index DB, cache, local storage, workers servers workers anything that is basically shared which is which is very interesting guys right so this they call it state partitioning and this is how it works basically so let's let's take an example this, this is a very beautiful example all right so let's say i am a dangerous man and i want to track you i own i own foo.com and i own bar.com and i have put a script on this side called tracker.com and i put a script on that side also also tracker.com okay and here's how i i, I can track you other across the site be, before this firefox change very simple uh, you visit foo.com for the first time there is a script that will send host request or a get request to tracker.com automatically so when we first start there is no cookies for tracker.com so it will not send anything so the servo tracker.com will generate a, a unique identifier for you, right? And then return back this identifier. And as a result, it will set the cookie for tracker.com. Now you have a beautiful cookie for tracker.com that was set by foo.com, but we don't know that. The browser for, for all it's known that tracker.com now has a cookie. Now when you go to you go to bar.com and you hit enter, there is a cookie for tracker.com with your beautiful device id uniquely identifying you so that since we're since bar.com will send a request to tracker.com it will say hey browser hey by the way there's a beautiful cookie right here you want to send it <laughs> sure let me send it so you're gonna send it and the tracker will just identify that you came from bar.com and you came from foo.com so now you the tracker can identify across browsers, okay? So that's how they do it. All right, how do they solve it? Very simple. That's how they solve it, state partitioning. And they call it state partition, not cookie partition, because they want to make it general for anything, right? So now foo.com, you visit that for the first time, there's no cookies. Tracker.com, get called, there's no cookies, you send nothing. Tracker.com returns a, a beautiful new unique identifier for that session. All right, and then when you when it when it is returned, you're gonna set that cookie. But that cookie is un identified not just by the tracker.com; it is identified by it, it appends Firefox start appending this the source as well. So now, hopefully, you can see me and my my face is not covering this stuff, right? So essentially, what happens here is the http 4com is attached to this. Now, this is the unique identifier. So now, if you go to bar.com, <laughs> okay, uh, if you go to bar.com, technically, bar will start looking, hey, 
call tracker.com and tracker.com the browser will say okay do i have a cookie it will say nope because to check that do i have a cookie you need to append the bar.com to give a unique identifier for the cookie and it's a unique cookie job so obviously you do not have cookies for that so you're going to send a brand new request without any cookies the tracker.com will identify it as just another request and it's going to generate a new identifier for you for bar.com return that and it's going to set it here so you have not been tracked in this case because that id is not the same right these are different ideas so now the, the the second question that comes to my mind hussein doesn't that break single sign-ons because that's how single sign-ons work you have to they set a cookie and then as you navigate to another website you, they, they make that request for you to their OAuth service and identify you as a result because that cookie is sent that's how we saw single sign-ons break with same site uh, property when google implemented it everything broke okta sign in broke a lot of other third party sign single sign on all broke because they were relying on that so they hacked the whole thing to change it i believe to none same site just to make it work but firefox has the same problem how do you solve single sign-ons and they actually discussed this very interesting here right the way they will solve it is i'm gonna give you this picture and you're going to immediately understand it. Yes, access grants. Hey, you will get this message every time, right? So now, if once you are in this mode, you go to Facebook, you go to other websites, you're going to start seeing this pop up all the time. I, I believe Firefox will start blocking it by default, right? If it knows that it's Facebook or something shady like that, it will start blocking it but it will give you this option to allow or block in case of single sign-ons right now how does it know that it's a single sign-on versus shady they say it's heuristics and i don't understand really how they don't explain this in details here i believe they, they explain in another blog in the mdn website the mozilla developer network but guys so that said this is state partitioning state partitioning included so they can solve the tracking problem but that broke a single sign-on, so they have to solve it with access grants. All right, guys, that was that's it for me today. What do you think about this? Do you think it will succeed? This will. Do you think it will block uh, tracking forever? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.